Uh, all right, one more. The one that most people forget. Oh, you had a question? I was going to say, why are you, how come the, the base isn't acting down on the table? It is, it is acting on the table, but not with the gravitational pull. Okay. When we get to chapter 9, I think it is, we have to get to the full formula. The weight is equal to mg, it's just a very specific case, but there is a gravitational pull between these two, but it is so incredibly tiny. Just like there's a gravitational pull between us right now, but it's so easy for you just to walk away or for me to walk away, that that pull is so small, we are ignoring it. Okay, so it'd be like a normal force. That's the force that's acting here, yes. Okay, I got it. And we will get to that in just a moment. I don't wanna, I don't wanna <laughs> go away before we forget about the weights. There's one more set of weights. Does the ceiling have a weight? Yes, it does. The ceiling is an object in the picture. It does have a weight. Spoiler, sorry. Should have let somebody tell me. And sort of to Jasmira's question and then the conclusion she came to, if the tablecloth magically disappeared, what would the vase do? Fall slightly and the table sinks. Yeah, it would fall, which tells us that the gravitational force here is independent of the tablecloth. However, now that we're done with the weights, Jasmira, normal force? <laughs> yes, the, the vase acting down on the tablecloth. All right, so I got this Y sub V. And where's the other part of that pair? Um, the tablecloth acting back on the vase. Which way? So which way am I drawing the arrow on the vase? Up. Yeah, absolutely. Now again, I used the letter Y just because that was my high school physics textbook. Uh, my preference is you don't use capital N for normal force, but whatever symbol you end up using. If, if you're using something that's just bizarre, like you're using the letter Q for normal force, please make sure you label it that so I know what you're talking about there. And if you write out normal force, please make sure you write out the word normal and not natural, which is the most common mistake that people make. All right. So, one pair of normal forces. Now what? The tablecloth acting on the table. Yeah, which way am I drawing those forces? Uh, the tablecloth is acting down onto the table and the table is acting up on the table. So I drew my arrows just like she said. She said down on the table and later she said up on the tablecloth. So I drew it down on the table, up on the tablecloth. Now, ideally, if this were, if we were doing draftsman work, we would draw those arrows so that they were the same size. These arrows should be the same size, but to offset the fact that it's so difficult to do that on something like this, that's why I have the label YTC, which tells us that it's the same magnitude because I put it the same label on it. Uh, so we've got a couple more normal forces to go. The table. I heard table. Yeah, normal force acting upward on the table and then downward on the ground. Okay. You do not need to draw a normal force for each of the visible legs. Because I would contend, if you need to draw it for each of the visible legs, then why not do it for all four legs? Or why not the left half of the left leg and the right half of the left leg? Just one is fine. And then the same with the man, normal force, upward on him, downward on the ground. So 
for every weight force, is there going to be a normal force? No. Not always? Not always. So is there one for the ceiling? Oh. All right. So, there's no contact, but I mean... Yeah, it's not touching you. On something like this, clearly there's a ceiling. Something's got to be holding it up other than magic. I, you know, then I faith get... Then I find myself in this issue of, all right, do I start drawing the entire room? If I draw the room, am I drawing, I mean, how, when do I stop? And so I stopped it right there. I think in this particular problem that I say, just I think you say ignore, ignore the ceiling. ceiling. I don't think the, the ceiling, ceiling was involved at all. I said ignore the ceiling or ignore what holds it up. Let's hold, it holds it up. Yeah. Yeah. So if we wanted to do a full, a full one, then I would have walls there, and then there'd been a force upward on the ceiling from the walls. And I think one of the ones I've done in the past had that, but in this case, yeah, let's not worry about what's holding it up. If you put something up, you know, like force sub magic, I, I'd circle it and just write IG in for I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore that, but it, it's not wrong. Okay. Given the way I've written it. So what about the pulleys? What about them? Is there normal force between those and the ground and then the one on the ceiling? All right, so this is one of the reasons, and some students will put that in there. This is one of the reasons why I drew the pulley already attached to the ground, so I don't have to worry about the force that's connecting these two. Okay, and what about the rope in the pulleys? Yes, you do need to worry about that. Okay. There's got to be some reason the rope is bent like this. So there's normal force acting upward on the top pulley on the ceiling and then downward on the rope? So if I... If I were pushing down on the rope like that, would it sort of bow like this? No, so it would be the opposite. The rope is on this side of the pulley. So, so it is acting that. It's pushing up on the rope. The pulley is pushing up on the rope. Up on the rope and down with the pulley. And down with the pulley. It's not like the rope is pushing like this against the pulley. It's, it's hanging up there. Okay. And then it's down on the rope on the other end. So when you got a bent rope like this, the normal force is what's actually causing it to bend. So they'll be pointed towards each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the way I'm drawing it here, yes, it looks like they're being drawn. They're towards each other. In reality, they're not. Actually. Because the rope is on top of. The, yes. Okay. I see. So why sub? R1, and then Y sub R2. Is there normal force between the rope and the tablecloth and the rope and the man? No, because we don't know how it's actually attached to the tablecloth and we don't know how he's holding it. I mean, most people, when they pull on a rope, it's friction is primarily the force, but maybe he has it wrapped around his hand and it's a normal force. So. Okay. We don't know. So what do we call it if we don't know? Other. Other. No, not other. Oh. Yep. A certain magic word over there. So if you have tension in somewhere, you won't have a normal force between them? Not where the contact is. Okay. I'm trying to think of how I would set that up so you would have a normal force and tension there. Yeah, that would be some fine drawing on my part to distinguish those. <laughs> Yeah, no, at the end, assume that the rope is attached, but that the force acting on the rope is tension, and don't worry about the what actually is causing the tension. Okay. Just like drawing up. If you ignore the tension, it doesn't exist. Uh, anything else touching? We've got man and ground touching. Got that. Got rope and bottom pulley, rope and top pulley, vase and tablecloth, tablecloth, table, table, down. I think that's it. So we got weight and normal force. Boiler, no weather. Tension. Tablecloth and the rope, and then the rope and the man. And which way is it acting, let's say, over here? Towards each other. And similar over here. Is there tension on the pulleys? What do you mean? Since they're bent, 
That, that's this case. I'm calling it normal force. See, okay. Because we know how it's actually draped over it. We don't know. It's not a matter of hmm, how we like touching it. the bully. It, no, we know it's how it's touching the bully. Okay. We can name them the same thing. Attention. Yes, because for a single ideal rope, you can do it the same. If it's not an ideal rope, then you would need to throw some, a subscript. They, those would have some subscript, and the, these two would have a different subscript. I guess another case, if we do it doing tug of war. So half the glass pulling this way, half the glass pulling that way. If we assume it's an ideal rope, then the tension on this end and that end between the people uh, are the same. But if I came out into the middle and I started pulling one way or the other, then the tension is no longer the same at each end. So. Okay. So anyway, that, yes, at this point for a single rope, you can use the same symbol at each end. And we're done. We have only one rope. We've got the tensions at each end, so we're done. And now friction. The pulleys. Pardon? The pulleys. You said pulleys? Yeah, so friction on the pulleys since the rope is... The rope is frictionless. Yeah, the oh, rope's okay. ideal. We can th call them ideal pulleys, too. And some students will throw friction in there. And again, I just circle it right at the end. I'm not going to worry my critical head about that. So is there friction on the tablecloth? Uh, yes, there is. Okay. So what's causing that friction on the tablecloth? The rope pulling it? The table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going more for the, oh, okay. the table. The rope pulling it, yes, it does lead to friction being there because now there's desired relative motion, but the rope is not exerting tension on it. really need to put those farther away from me before I start using a permanent marker. Now, I heard table. Which way is the table exerting friction on the tablecloth? I want to say to the left because it's getting pulled to the right. So friction on the tablecloth. So which way is, where's the other part of that pair? Going? To the right. Indeed. Yes, okay. So, this goes back to the other day when I thought that friction was always the opposite direction. Is that only when there's two objects involved? There has to be two objects. There have, yeah. In order for there to be friction, there has to be two objects that are either literally rubbing against the other like this, mm -hmm. or one that wants to do it. Okay. So, for example, if I push on the table, the table's not moving, but if the ground were frictionless, that table would move. So why is it going the opposite way, the um, tablecloth? So imagine you're the table, and the table, which way, if you're, you're the table looking up, mm -hmm. or I guess looking up, which way is the tablecloth going to move from your point of view? The way it's being pulled? Yeah. Friction, of, friction hates that. Okay. So friction's going to oppose the direction that you would see the tablecloth moving. Okay, if that's with anything, like if this table was to go that way, then friction is going to be applied that way. On the table, yes. Okay. Which is why it's a little bit tricky when you're dealing with walking, because you think about, I'm walking that way, but really it's the, the foot is the one that's causing the friction. The friction is between the foot and the ground. So the fr your foot is pushing backwards. The friction does not want your foot to go backwards. Yeah, friction is the tough one. I work on it. <laughs> yeah, and another just rule of thumb as you're looking at this, trying to think of all right, where friction should be. Friction requires normal force. So, wherever there's a normal force pair, you need to consider if there's friction involved. So, obviously, it doesn't work. It, there's not friction everywhere. There's a normal force pair because we've eliminated the friction between the pulley and the rope. But it's a place to at least consider. Does the man have friction? Yes, he does. Why? Because he's not moving. Like his legs, his feet don't move. He can just pull the tablecloth. Oh, but he's not pulling that way you just did. 
Which way is the which way is he pulling on the tablecloth? His feet are going to be moving this way. Or he's going to be moving this way. If it were frictionless, wouldn't it just like pull him? Yeah. Okay. Which way would he be pulled if this were if he were on a frictionless floor? To the left. Oh yeah. And the reason why it's that way is if we look at the forces acting on him, we have normal force and weight acting on him. They're up and down. They're not going to affect this motion directly. But this will. Oh, he's pulling down. So. He's pulling not only down, but he's pulling down at an angle. So would friction be going, if he's pulling down, will friction be going up? Is his feet? No, it still needs to be parallel to the surface. Oh, so it'd be down at his feet? It'd be down at his feet. So, so it would be left. Friction would be going left on him? Yeah. Because he's moving that way? Not because there's part of the force here that is acting to the left. So if this were frictionless, as he's pulling on the rope like that, he's going to be pulled. He would go with the right. Yeah. Okay. He's being pulled in that direction. And so friction hates that. So the fact that friction is going to the right is because we assume he's not moving. Or if he slides still, the friction's still going to be going that way. Oh. That's what him. Yeah, if this if this tension right here were straight up and down, then there'd be no friction at his feet. Because there's no force trying to push him one way or the other. So on the floor of the young left? Yes. And let's see, so that normal force we got it. No friction, no friction. We got that friction pair. So we got two more friction pairs. Between the vase and the tablecloth. Okay. Which way is it going on the vase? The one on the vase is going to the right, and the one on the tablecloth is going to the left. And another way of looking at that, looking at it is, if you are the vase looking down at the tablecloth, then you look which way is the tablecloth going? Well, the tablecloth is going that way. Well, friction is going to oppose that, and then this is the counter to it. Or if I pull a tablecloth slowly, that vase is going to be going with the tablecloth, and it's friction that's the thing that's carrying it. So this is the force that causes the vase to move that way. And we have one more pair. The table on the ground. Yes. Which way is it acting on the table? To the right. Why? Because it wants to go to the left. What would be causing it to want to go to the left? No idea. But the table isn't moving. <laughs> Pardon? The table isn't moving. Right, because there's friction. Wait, what's causing it to move? The think, think about the forces that we have written on the table already. Yeah. We've got four forces on it. But you pulling the tablecloth is not going to want to make the table move. Well, you're pulling down at an angle, though. But we have this friction right here. This friction is, is trying to, this right here is trying to drag the table that way. So she is right. I, I just didn't know why. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking you, you had the, the direction backwards. The friction acting on the table is to the left. Did you say left? I don't know. I think you said it's right. also possible I got it backwards just because I'm standing opposite. You, you, said, you said right. Wait, I'm so confused oh. on why there's friction. No, it goes left because the table's wanting to go to the right. Correct. So it goes left, keeping it where it's at. Yes. An object, it, the second time Sorry. today that someone made the argument that there's no friction because it's not moving, friction doesn't require movement. It requires the desire to move. If the floor were frictionless and you pull a dragon tablecloth across it like that, 
the cable is going to get dragged along with it. Not, not much. Well, I guess it depends on how much friction there is there. Uh, let's see. The analogy. Well, similar to the vase. But what's what's causing it to want to move? The tablecloth. I know that we have that one, but I thought that was for the tablecloth. Yeah, it's the as you drag the tablecloth to the right. That tablecloth is dragging across the table. Yeah. But to the right. That is the force that is trying to make this thing go to the right. Okay. And I still want to address something Penelope Nelson said also. But. So that's the force that makes it want to go to the right. So the friction wants to oppose this. So friction table. It's not going to be a particularly big force. If you drag something across the tablecloth across the table, there's not a whole lot of this. There's still desire for it to move. Yes, I'm giving it, I'm anthropomorphic. I'm going to try the word right now. I'm giving it thinking capabilities in terms of desire to move. Now, you commented the table costs being pulled down. Mm -hmm. And your argument, if you follow that logic, what would you do? Where would you take it? The weight's going to it. Yeah, it would seem like it would push the table to the left. Okay. So, there is another piece of this depending upon how the table is coming off the table. Well, it's also going to affect the things on the tablecloth. Yeah, and we have some of that that's taken into account. It's the how it's coming off the edge here that I'm looking at right now. So, try to get the same orientation there. So, if this thing comes straight off, you know, horizontally, then this drawing works. There's friction. I can feel the friction here. As I pull it this way, I can I can feel the drag on I can feel the drag on the paper trying to hold the paper back. I can feel that. 